Hello and welcome to lesson two of Web Design and Development for National 5 Computing Science. Today we're looking at design. This is quite a big topic, as you can see here. It's quite a big one. So we're going to take a look at the basics first and we'll cover more specifics in future lessons. Let's go. So for part one, we're going to talk about website structure, wireframes, and a couple other things while we're here. Once you've analyzed the requirements of a website, you're now able to step into designing. And there are multiple factors you must consider when you're about to design a website. You have to think about the navigation structure, how the user interface is going to look, and you have to think about legal implications as well, which, as it says here, we'll cover in the next presentation. Regarding navigation, there are two, now there are many navigation types, and most websites would have a kind of a mesh where every page is accessible from every page. But according to the SQA, you need to especially consider these two navigational structures. We have linear and hierarchical. Linear is where you go from one page to the next to the next in a linear fashion, like a line. It's kind of like a book where you start on page one, you read all this stuff, and then there'll be a link to the next page. You read all that stuff, link to the next page. Notice the arrows denoting the direction of the link. So there is no link back to page one. If you get to page two, the links only go forward. The other type of structure is hierarchical. Now this is where you have the top level home page, and on the home page there would be links to expertise, locations, and contact us. There wouldn't be links on the homepage to the other five remaining pages. In order to get to games, you would have to go to expertise first and then into games. Or you could go from expertise to training or from expertise to VR. And so this is the, the hierarchical structure. It's kind of like you've got the top level here and in order to get to the, the really sub-levels, you have to go to one of these medium, these middle levels first. Uh, it doesn't indicate with arrows on this diagram but it's kind of implied, because there are, there are no arrows, it's kind of implied that if you're on the home page, you can get to all three of these. And if you get to the expertise page, you can get back to the home page. You could probably imagine that there would be a navigation bar with all three of these links on all four of these pages, if that makes sense. Well, including a link to the home page. But in order to get to games, training and VR, you would have to be on the expertise page first. So this is navigational structure. Now there are, uh, some appendices in the, the course specification document, if I show you that now. This is the course specification that I keep showing you. It's on the, uh, the SQA website. Uh, I've got the same document open here, but I've skipped to page 62. So website structure. There is more information in here. Here we can see it's kind of like a hierarchical, but um, not, many, not many levels of hierarchy here. And it's got more information for you here. So that's navigation structure. Next up, we've got user interface. There are two main methods for designing a user interface, wireframes and lo-fi prototypes. A wireframe, this is where you set out the visual layout of the page. You would include all the elements that you want to be on your page, but not um, the exact text and images. As you can see here, we've got crosses in a box for an image. We've got lots of images down here. And the text here is not the actual text that would be included. It says it's got the lorem ipsum dollar sit -a -met text. This is filler text. So this isn't the actual text that would appear here. And in fact, you don't need to even include lorem ipsum text. You could just have lines indicating that there would be text here. So what do you need to show? You need to show the links, the text and the media. And it's more about the layout more than anything else. You could include uh, details about the style. So you could mention that this is going to be a header. This is going to be a paragraph. I would include, y you might say there will be a thick black border on this image or that this would be underlined. You can indicate all these things. And again, there is more information in the appendices. Now, Appendix 9 is website structure, but Appendix 10 is about user interface design. And if we go even further, so this is a, a wireframe. This is a wireframe and it tells you what to include. It's all here. But even further, we've got low fidelity prototyping. Now, what is low fidelity prototyping? Let's take a look. Low fidelity prototyping is when you do it on, with pen and paper. So it's like paper designs, and you can imagine that you are navigating from one page to another. Here we can see a mobile app, and if I click on the profile button, it could take me to the profile page. And you would have these on paper, and you could attempt to recreate the, the user interface and the navigation of this app, or it could be a mobile website, 
or a full website, you can do this on larger pieces of paper. And you would try and actually use this low fidelity prototype without having to write any code at all. There's actually a very, a very good example of low fidelity prototyping, and I'll include a link in the description to that video. Um, it, it does a far better job than I could describe of low fidelity prototyping. But basically, it's on paper, and you're, you try and imitate the actual user interface. Now, as I said, there is more information in the appendices of the course specification document, which you can find on the SQA's website. And it's got lots of information here. And there are different ways of creating these low fidelity prototypes. Um, pen and paper is probably the easiest, most low, low fidelity way that you can get. Of course, low fidelity prototypes don't have to be pen and paper. You can do it using uh, a, a website. Here we have a website called Pencil. Pencil. And these low fidelity prototypes have been created using that, that tool. So there you have it. Lesson two done. We're going to take a look at legal implications in the next one. I'll see you then.